Hi everyone, Kim here at Olive City Homestead. In today's video, I am sharing two ways that you can use and enjoy your strawberry fruit tree. I'm going to make a healing tea from the leaves of this small tree and a delicious healthy smoothie using the red fruit balls that I froze back in January. Now, this photo is what one of my strawberry fruit trees looked like back in November, but as you'll see in just a moment, it looks quite different now at the end of March. So here is one of the strawberry trees now, and you can see the reddish bark underneath the peeling bark is now exposed and very pretty. And no blossoms right now because the blossoms come in the winter, and at this point they have dried up. And if you get close, which I will take you now, you can see the dried up blossoms. Now you might think, oh no, is that the fruit dried up and it, it burned up or got frosted and it's no good? But no, that's the actual dried blossom. And if you look more closely, here on the end, those are some of the fruit where the blossom is actually dropped off and now the tiny little fruit is going to start to grow there are random ones that are larger uh, i'm not sure why but that's just how it goes there you can see some little green fruits with the red stem still on it from the flower so the petals fell off the blossom but the little stem is still there that will fall off too and then those will continue to grow throughout the year and be ready to harvest in probably December. But I came out here now because, not just to show you the bark and the state of the very, very young developing fruit, but also to harvest a few leaves so I can make some tea. Because these leaves are full of anti-inflammatory properties, which are great for my arthritis. They're also full of antioxidants, which as we all know, are great for health in general. So I'm just gonna cut off a few leaves and take them inside and make some tea. Here is another one of my strawberry trees. It's slightly taller and as you can see, the bark is a little different. It is not peeling as much yet. When it does peel, it is red bark, although not quite as dark cinnamon color as the other. This makes me think that I have two different species. But I did want to show you that it does look a little different. It's a little older, of course, but it also just has kind of a different um, look to it to me. And it's sort of in more shade than the other tree. So I think that that affects the timing of its fruiting. So it is farther along. You can see the fruits are larger than the other one. And they're very dependent, our beautiful strawberry trees are, in their fruiting on the weather. So depending on the amount of sunlight they get, depending upon the temperatures that they are exposed to in the winter, it all affects how much fruit they bear. There you can see some of the small fruits and one of them with the blossoms still attached at the bottom as they do. So again, I will show you the progress of both of these strawberry trees as we move through the seasons. Of course, those panicles of pink blossoms appear in the late fall, November, December, and uh, that's the new fruit that will come on. At this point, though, I just have the developing young, young fruits. I'm also going to be getting another strawberry tree, or maybe two, that I'm going to grow in pots. I'm going to get them very small, maybe four to six inches, and I'm going to grow them in pots for a while. And I'm also going to, this summer, take some semi-hard cuttings, and this fall in November, take some mature hardwood cuttings and the success rate for propagation via cuttings and also via seed for the strawberry tree the arbutus plant is rather low but why not it might work and it's going to be fun and it might take me a few tries a few seasons to 
learn the tricks and have some success, but I think it's worth it. This tree is so gorgeous when it's in bloom and as it matures and develops its red wood, um, it's just magnificent in your garden uh, or as a hedge if you wanted to plant several together somewhere on your property. And also, it's so healthy for you. I mean, in addition to being anti-inflammatory and have, being full of antioxidants, it's full of so many vitamins. Uh, and carotenoids that uh, it's just absolutely amazing for a variety of health issues um, from arthritis to macular degeneration and so much more and we'll get into it like I said when we go inside in just a sec and make a wonderful strawberry tree fruit smoothie and some tea now when cutting leaves for tea I like to cut the new young growth that's coming out at the top um, and then you can cut a few um, larger leaves. So this size right here is good to have a few of. And then if you take some of the very new growth, very small at the tip, those are very tender and they will have some very nice flavor. Of course, if you're cutting this and not holding a camera at the same time, you can actually catch the leaf when it falls. Me, I'm gonna have to pick it up off the ground. When you cut, make sure you're just cutting the leaf. You certainly don't want to cut off any blossoms or any very young ripening fruit or any new growth that is shooting out. I thought I would start by showing you a few of my little teacups and saucers that I have collected over many years at different thrift shops. So this is a little tiny one. I think they call it a dimitas. And I just love the colors of that one. It's true you couldn't get very much tea if you were using it, but sometimes you just need a few sips. Look at this cup. Isn't that pretty? These sets that I've picked up through the years have all cost between a quarter and a dollar, so it is not a big expense, and they're not always in perfect condition. Sometimes they have a chip. Here's one last one I'll show you right now. Next time I make a different kind of tea, I'll show you some more. Isn't this one pretty? I think this one is really elegant, and yet sort of simple at the same time. Another thrift store find. I just love the old fashioned look of this one. And of course you can boil your water any way you'd like, whether it be in a, a simple saucepan on the stove or in a tea kettle on the stove, in an electric kettle or in your microwave for that matter in a cup. But however you boil it, I think it's really nice to transfer it to a very pretty teapot before you serve it to yourself and perhaps others. Just remember, if you do use a teapot like this, you're gonna wanna heat it with hot water ahead of time. Just run hot water over it and perhaps over your teacups too. And that way, when you do pour the hot tea into them, it stays nice and hot as you drink it. Now, there are two ways you can steep the tea. You can steep it right in the teapot. If I pour the bar boiling water in here, I can then add my tea strainer and putting the tea leaves directly inside the tea strainer pouring the water over it and putting the lid on it i can steep the tea directly in this tea kettle or i can put the tea strainer directly in one of my cups and the tea can steep that way the other way you can do it is to simply put some of the leaves directly into the cup, pour the boiling water over them, and then let them sink to the bottom. Also, you could put the tea leaves directly into the teapot, pour the boiling water over the tea leaves, and let it steep directly in the teapot. When you pour out, the tea leaves should have settled to the bottom and should not go into the cup. If any do escape and go into the cup, they will then settle to the bottom of the cups. You can also strain the tea leaves out with a sieve if you want to go to that effort. These are all ways you could do it, but the simplest way I find is to use some sort of strainer like this one. They come in all sizes, so you can get some that fit a cup more easily than a pot if that's what you'd like to do. 
Now here you see I've got a handful of tea leaves I've rinsed off. You don't really need to rinse them off if you're growing organically and you feel like you don't have uh, a lot of dust going around in your backyard, but rinsing them quickly is no big deal. And these are more than enough to make several cups of tea. It's enough to make a teapot that would serve, I'd say, at least three cups of tea, perhaps four. So what I'm going to do actually is show you uh, steeping them in a teacup loosely and then doing the other two-thirds of them in the teapot in the strainer. All right, I have the leaves in the cup and now I am pouring the boiling water right over the fresh leaves. Now you might be thinking, wait, I thought tea was made from dry leaves. And that is true. But tea can also be made over fresh leaves. Herbal tea or regular tea made from the Camellia sinensis tea plant can be made with either dried or fresh leaves. Now it's true the tea you would buy in the store is always made from dried leaves, but that's because the main reason it is dried is for storage life. Fresh tea leaves only last a few days, so obviously we would have to dry them to be able to store them for any significant amount of time. Um, really, dry tea leaves, whether they're from herbs or from the Camellia sinensis plant, can last, oh, two, three, four or five years even. If you keep them in a cool, dark place, then they'll last quite a long time. And of course, the large tea growers couldn't sell their products in a commercial way unless they were able to have that long storage life. So that's one of the main two reasons for drying tea leaves. The other reason that the Camellia sinensis tea plant tea leaves are dried is because it is part of the processing of the leaves and different types of leaves are harvested and then processed in different ways, dried in different amounts of times and um, to affect the flavor of them. And we'll get into that another time when I get my tea plants. They're on the way here. They should be arriving in the next day or two, and then I'm going to plant them. But herbal teas, which I would consider the strawberry tree fruit tea, a herbal tea, with them, there's no reason to dry them unless you want to store them for yourself. For instance, if uh, I wanted to store one of my herbs for the winter to make tea in the winter that was not an evergreen herb, then I would definitely dry it. And of course, you can dry it in the oven, you can dry it in a dehydrator, and you can dry the herbs or the regular Camellia sinensis tea plant leaves in um, an open air situation, say outside on screens. You just want really good airflow. And that works really well in any of those ways. Now, with my strawberry tree fruit, those leaves are evergreen, as is, say, my rosemary plant or my oregano, and, and a lot of my herbs are evergreen, and so I could actually use them fresh all year round. But some of them, like for instance, my lemon verbena, I would definitely need to dry if I wanted to have that available to me in the winter. Now, once you've got your tea steeping like this, whether it was dried or fresh, doesn't matter, um, you let it steep between three and five minutes. Generally, the length of the steeping is just going to affect how strong the tea is. And for that matter, all I put in here are leaves from the strawberry fruit tree. However, I'm thinking it would be really good with some mint, so I'm gonna quick throw in some mint. Now here are some lemon balm, and I think that would taste really good with this strawberry tree fruit. And I've also got some spearmint I brought in. So I'm also gonna put the spearmint in with the strawberry fruit tree leaves in the pot and steep them all together. That's the last of them. Add just a little bit more water. Oops, missed that one. There we go. And put the lid on. Okay. And to my cup of strawberry fruit tree leaves, I'm going to add a few stevia leaves, which are a natural sweetener, and some chocolate mint leaves. 
I think that this two will be a really good combination, a nice blend. All of these are going to have a very soothing, sedative effect, as well as the mint will have a, a sort of catalytic, invigorating effect. Combined with the anti-inflammatory and antioxidants that are in the strawberry fruit tree leaves themselves, I think that these teas both, in different ways, will be a great drink. As we let this tea steep for a moment, you might be wondering, why am I not showing my face? Now, maybe you're not wondering that at all, but if you are, there's a reason for that. So the reason is I need the soothing, calming, healing effects of this tea right now because this week I'm suffering from an abscess on one of my back teeth and I've never had a problem with my teeth and so this is um, very new to me and it's not very enjoyable at all. I'm on antibiotics and painkillers and, and I have a very high pain tolerance, so that'll tell you these are, this is pretty severe. <laughs> and I'm scheduled for a root canal, and that is not something I'm looking forward to, having had good teeth all my life. Um, not an experience I am enjoy the thought of. However, I do enjoy the thought of having this fixed and being moving beyond it. Meanwhile, uh, I think this tea is going to do a great deal to help me out, as well as help out my arthritis, because... Anything that has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties, as this tea does, um, is great for anyone with either osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. Not to mention all of the vitamins. I mean, vitamin C alone, there's 205% of your vitamin C recommended daily allowance. Also, there's like 21% of vitamin E and 12% of vitamin B3. There's tons of vitamin A and beta carotene and lutein. There's calcium, copper, and iron at a high level and potassium and manganese, zinc and phosphorus. Just so much that's good for me. Well, let's take a look. The tea is done. I would recommend having a saucer nearby to move your strainer. It's pale in color, but I bet it doesn't taste pale. I bet it tastes delicious. Let's see. Oh no, that is very good. Mmm. Definitely soothing. I've already drunk half of that. <laughs> you know what? That makes a great hot tea, but I would say it would also make a great cold iced tea. So remember, in the teapot, I had mostly the strawberry fruit tree leaves and added to it the spearmint and lemon balm. And that combination was definitely a winner. Now I'm going to try the cup which was mostly strawberry fruit tree leaves, and I added a little stevia and a little chocolate mint. Now, most of the leaves have gone down to the bottom, but there are a few right on top. I think I'm just going to lift them out. Let's taste this now. I would say that it's a lighter in flavor than the lemon balm and spearmint combo with the strawberry fruit tree leaves. Still very good, very soothing, just not as um, intense of flavor. Perhaps I should add a little bit more of the chocolate mint. I think that's what I'll try next time um, and see if that gives it that flavor I'm looking for. So I would say they both were a success, but the lemon balm spearmint addition to the strawberry fruit tree leaf tea was a huge, huge success because it not only tasted great as a hot tea, I can definitely tell that it will taste great as an iced tea as well. And as we head into summer, that around here, a uh, very hot summer, that's very important to me. Now, how about that smoothie? Recognize these? Yes, exactly. These beauties are the strawberry tree fruits. And I'm going to be making a smoothie with them. 
So smoothies are super easy to make. You just need a blender of some kind. I happen to have an old Ninja and we're gonna pop everything in here. The first thing that we're gonna put in is our liquid ingredient, which I'm using about a cup of almond milk. And the next thing I'm gonna be adding is, this is Greek yogurt. It is low fat, honey vanilla, Greek yogurt. It's the only kind of yogurt I can eat. I'm actually very lactose intolerant. Can't eat cheese, milk, yogurt, ice cream. But Greek yogurt doesn't bother me. And this adds a really great creamy texture to any smoothie you make. And along with the, the strawberry tree fruit, which also is gonna add a luscious creamy flavor, this is probably gonna be the creamiest smoothie I've ever had. Okay, I've just dumped in that yogurt. Now I'm dumping in the frozen fruit. I'm adding some of my um, peaches from last year that I froze because I think that'll be a nice combination. Another thing I always add is pineapple juice. Now you can add it as a liquid or you can add it frozen. I have it here in a bag because Whenever um, I buy canned pineapple in its own juice, which I frequently do for one reason only, my kids love Hawaiian pizza with, well, it's a veggie Hawaiian because they're all vegetarians, but it has pineapples and olives on it. And I buy the pineapple chunks in their own juice and there's all this juice left. So I simply pour it in a baggie and freeze it. And then I have it whenever I wanna make a smoothie and it adds a terrific punch to every smoothie. So I've broken that into little slushy chunks because I did take it out before the others so it could get a little bit slushy. And now I'm going to add in my extra things, which are, I always add in a little bit of pea protein. Since I also am a vegetarian, I like to get that protein extra in my diet. And flaxseed meal because that has so many health benefits. And neither of these will you taste at all in the end product. Now, sometimes I make green smoothies, but this is a fruit smoothie and not a green smoothie, so I'm not actually adding any of my purple tree kale or other greens from my garden that I might usually add. I'm going to start blending this. What I usually end up doing, and so I have it ready here, is I usually end up adding a little bit of crushed ice because I like a really thick smoothie, not watery at all. So if this doesn't seem thick enough from the frozen fruits and frozen juice, then I add some ice and it usually works great. So let's see what happens. Well, it looks pretty awesome. Look at all those speckles from the strawberry tree fruit. All right, this is very scientific. I'm tasting it. Hey guys, this is just for me so I can do that. That tastes super good, but it's not thick enough for me. Most people would like it, but not me. If you wanna be able to drink it with a straw, you might wanna leave it like that. If you like it super thick, like I do, add some ice. All right, time to check it. Does this seem thicker? It does. It does. Super yummy. I like the flavor of the strawberry tree fruit. It's definitely there. The peach is not overpowering it. Neither is the pineapple juice. Oh, I maybe would add a touch more of the strawberry tree fruit actually. Um, yeah, that would be great. As it is, it's super good, but I think I could even make it greater by adding just a few more of those because the flavor's actually brought out, I feel like, by this method of using it. And I'm really happy because guess what? <laughs> this frozen treat's gonna feel really good to my mouth right now, in addition to my tummy. Wow, doesn't that look so great? It tastes awesome and it looks pretty special with all those red sprinkly things throughout, which is really just part of the strawberry tree fruit. I actually have two more of those. That's a full wine glass size. Hey, better than wine. It's a strawberry tree smoothie.
I hope you guys enjoyed making smoothies and tea with me today. I will put the recipes for both of them down in the description. And if you try them yourselves, let me know. I will be back soon with more tea recipes and more smoothie recipes using herbs, fruit, veggies, and leaves from your garden. Remember, mm, you can create the life you want. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise.